All right, this is Horner, and we're looking at 2012 AP Physics C Mechanics Free Response Question number two. This one deals with an experiment, so instead of writing everything out, what I'm going to do is show you the key and kind of go through why they gave you points and uh, probably the easiest thing you would be able to do to, to do this problem. So um, the first thing that you have to do is list uh, any equipment that you would use in order to perform this experiment where you're looking at conservation of mechanical energy. You're transforming gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy. Don't let the word translational throw you here. They're just trying to make sure you understand it's not rotational energy. The only two things you really need to check are a meter stick and a stopwatch. That's the minimum you would need, but that's really all they want. If you check all these other things, that's fine, but you have to make sure that you use them within the question. They want you to outline a procedure for the experiment. Make sure you include a diagram. So that's really critical here. You have to include a diagram, label the equipment. You have to include a description of the measurements and a symbol for each measurement. If you don't do all those things, you won't get full credit for this. So there's a couple of ways to do this one. The first way to do it is to use a pulley. So I'm gonna kind of show you what this is. Um, the first way is to use a pulley and to do all these measurements, but I think it's a lot easier just to use an incline plane. The incline plane is a lot less to it, and the, the procedure is a little bit easier to do. So here's my incline plane. I have my car. It's at a height of the incline plane. And then there's a distance that it travels down. So this is the exact same thing that would happen with the pulley, except for now you don't have to worry about the pulley and the mass and the two heights and that type of thing. Um, you just use a balance to measure the mass of the cart. You'd start it at the top. You'd measure the height of the incline. You would then release it from rest, so your initial uh, velocity is zero. You then use a stopwatch to have uh, figure out how long it takes to get down to the bottom. And then you measure that distance. So really, that's all you need for this part of the problem. For part C, it says give a detailed account of the calculations of gravitational potential and translational kinetic energy both before and after. Notice that it does say of both, uh, yeah, it says uh, for both before and after in terms of the quantities uh, identified or measured in part B. So what we need to do for part C here is show you what we really want. Uh, what they would like you to do is show initial potential, final potential, initial kinetic, final kinetic, and then also show the velocity of the system. Notice that the answer they got for example one and the example two that we're going to talk about, basically the same equation. So our initial gravitational potential energy here is just the height of that ramp times the mass of the car times gravity. There is no final potential because it's down at the bottom. The initial kinetic is zero, and the final kinetic is just one-half mvf squared. Because acceleration is constant, we know we can use dy is equal to one-half gt squared. Uh, some things kind of cross off there. Um, so we're left with this equation, d is equal to one-half of the, of the velocities times time. Because um, you're just doing average velocity. It makes it a lot easier. So this is uh, this is the solution you get uh, you actually get six points for that so you have to be really careful that you include everything that is here next part of this problem is letter D uh, after your first trial they show that your energy actually increased during the experiment which we know we can't have uh, they want to know what happened and then explain kind of why that would affect it um, so for letter D we just need to say something like you accidentally push the cart um, there was a rubber band that was attached to the cart underneath you didn't see. There's a small motor. I don't, you know, all kinds of things. But if you said there's an unintentional push, you have to tell what it does. So here it increased the uh, initial energy. So that's really it. For the last part, letter E, uh, they just switch it on you. So instead of energy increasing, energy decreases. If you didn't make any math errors, they want you to go ahead and talk about what's going on. Include references to conservative and non-conservative forces. So remember, conservative is like gravity, because if you go up, then it comes back down. Non-conservative forces would be like friction, because when I push a box this way, um, the box doesn't come back. So that's non-conservative. So let's take a look at what they suggest here for identifying a reasonable cause and then give it an explanation. So friction on the object decreases speed, thereby decreasing the energy. 
I would probably add to that that it is a non-conservative force. So you know you do uh, you kind of have to follow what they ask. So this would be non-conservative. Um, it does not conserve. Uh, it's not a conservative force at all. It doesn't go back to kind of where it began. And that is the end of this question.